Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about the Canon AE-1 program and the basis of how to use this camera. So follow me and let's get started. Days ago I received this package at my door and for the title you might already know what it is. It cost me around 115 US dollars, but I think it was a nice price because it came with these two film rolls. So first we have these little boxes from Kodak and inside we have the films that we put in inside the camera. These are films of 35mm and 100 of ISO. Then we have our main product beautiful Canon AE-1 program from the decade of the 80s. Funny story, when I first bought the camera, I thought it was a regular Canon AE-1, then I realized it was a program one, which is nice, I'm not complaining, because the program is such a nice camera, and in this video I will tell you why and the basis of how to use this Canon. So if you want to see something in particular, I will leave the index below for you. So here we have the camera in all its glory. As you can see, it came with a 35 to 105mm lens, which is pretty cool. In general, I've seen these cameras for sale with just a 35mm lens, so having a zoom lens is really nice. To so go into the upper part, we have the film rewind crank, the isofilm scale, the battery check bottom, flash contacts, the shutter speed oval, the film advance lever, the frame counter, shutter bottom, and the A, L, and S, which is the main switch. So let's talk about the ISO film scale. To adjust the ISO, you have to move this little part to the left, while you're pressing the bottom next to the ISO film scale. You will see how the numbers start to move, and now you can set to the ISO that it's indicated on your film roll. Mine is 100 ISO, as you can remember. Next, we have the shutter speed oval. Here, you can choose at what speed you want to take your photo, either if it's low to let moonlight pass, or fast to freeze the image. I usually leave it at 125 or 60. In the shutter speed oval, you can also see the program mode. In this mode, the camera determines the shutter speed and the aperture settings. This mode calculates what the right exposure should be. So if you want to use the program mode, you have to set A in the aperture ring of your lens and set program on the shutter speed oval. A little higher from the shutter speed is the frame counter. This little part is the one keeping the track of how many photos you have taken and should be changing every time you press the shutter button. Next to these two parts is the main switch. Here you can see the letters A, L and S. A is for turning the camera, L is for turn it off or lock it, and S is for the self timer. So yeah, when you're not using your camera, remember to put it on L. Now moving to the bottom of the camera. We have a film advance cover for the automatic power winder, the film rewind release bottom, the tripod socket, and in the end, the contact for the power winder. In the front, we have these two bottoms and this little part next to the lens. This one is the AE lock switch, this one is the exposure preview switch, and the step down lever. We will see later in detail the front and the back of the camera, along with the battery, lens and the loading and unloading of the film. So now we're going to the inside parts of the camera. To open the lid we pop the film rewind crank. We can start seeing that the inside of the camera is separated into three important parts. First we have the film cassette area where you can put your film in here and the job of the rewind crank is to hold your film Next is the guide rails. These rails force your film to stay in place. These are on top of a shutter curtain. 
which you should never touch. And last is the film tension sprocket that prevents your film from moving and keeps it rolling in while you're taking the photos. Now, moving to the battery in the Canon AE-1 program, the battery is located in the front of the camera. Here is the battery chamber that has a little tiny button that you can push and it opens. The camera uses a 6 volt battery. You can see that the chamber has the color red and blue inside, which is for positive and negative. The battery also has these colors in the top and in the bottom of itself. The AE-1 program has this black bottom in the top of the camera, which is the battery check bottom, that allows you to know when the battery is dying or it's good. So when you click the shutter button and at the same time the battery check button, you hear a beeping which means that the battery is good, and if you don't hear anything, it means that it's time to change the battery. I'm not sure how much does this battery last, but I've heard from other users that it lasts between 7 months up to a year. Now, let's talk about the lens. As I said in the beginning of the video, the camera came with a 35 to 105 mm lens. This lens is pretty interesting because as you can see it's a zoom but also has a micro part in the beginning of the lens. I tried to search for more information about this lens but I couldn't find a lot. Maybe it's just a regular telephoto lens from around the time, maybe it's an experiment, maybe it's not. So if you happen to know more about this lens, please share in the comments. So this is how the telephoto looks at its maximum capacity. It has the aperture ring and as I said, the macro part. As I was using this lens, I was really impressed by the duality with which it works. And I tried to record for you an example of how it looks both in telephoto and in the macro. To mount the lens again, it is red dot to red dot, but also the red dot of the lens has to be aligned with the central focus, then you're good to mount. Now here we have the front part of the inside of the camera. As you can see here, is the reflex mirror. When you have this red dot, you shouldn't mount the lens, so what you're going to do is open this top down lever. Push the silver button and you will see that the red dot is gone, and now you're free to mount your lens. So now we're going to my favorite part and last of this video and is loading and unloading of the film. First of all, you want to take your film from your Kodak box. And a good advice is that you cut the little piece of the box that is in one side, which contains important information of your film. For example, like the number of ISO or the amount of photos you're allowed to take. Now you can place this little paper in this part of the camera named Memo Holder. Now for the loading of the film, you need to make sure you turn the camera on, choose your shutter speed in the oval, and then open the back lip of your camera. Remember that you do this by pulling up the film rewind crank. Place the film in the cassette area. Make sure you're placing the right side of the film where it should be. Then take the part of the film that is outside the roll and pull it up to the tension sprocket where you're going to insert the tip of the film. Once you're sure the tip is in the sprocket, pull the film advance lever and press the shutter button so you can take a photo. You will see how the film rolls up in the sprocket. I like to do this two times so I'm sure it's in place. Once you do it and you're sure everything is where it should be, Close the lip and pull down the film rewind crank, and you're ready to shoot. Now, for unloading the film, you first need to push the film rewind release button, which is in the bottom of the camera. Then you will start rolling the film rewind crank clockwise opposite, and you should hear like a cracking sound of your film rolling in. Once you're finished rolling your film, you will hear how the sounds change and even feel the rewind. 
So then you open your lid and take up your film and put it on its case. I level mine because I want to remember what's on the film and also to remember that it has been used. Because I don't have a good memory, I probably forget what photos are and if it's used or not. So technically that's it. I have wanted to do this video since the camera arrived. So I hope it has been helpful and it has worked for you. And if you have an analog camera and would like to share your photos, you can leave your blog, your Flickr, your Instagram, Tumblr, whatever you use in the comments and I will gladly see them. I will leave my website and Instagram in the description of the video so that you can see a little bit of what I do. And I hope to unload more videos related to photography and what's around it. So thank you so much and I'll see you guys soon.